How's everybody doing? My name is Brian Puente. I'm the support specialist for Adobe Creative Cloud at the University of Arizona. And today we're going to be talking about creative editing um, and imaging on mobile. So if you don't know, Adobe has a lot of different applications that you can use um, on your mobile device. I'm using an iPad here just because I think the screen fits better for a streaming situation. But a lot of these things are available on your phone. And we'll probably stick to things that are available mostly on the phone. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and walk through some of the applications that we have here. As always with these workshops, I'm constantly checking the chat, so please let me know if you have any questions as we go. Um, and the applications I'm probably gonna focus on today are, and, you can, and I just grouped all these together in a nice little, and with all of the Adobe applications, you can see there's a lot of them. But the ones that we're gonna focus on today are probably Lightroom, Photoshop Fix, Photoshop Mix, and then, um, I'll probably play a little bit inside of um, Spark page and maybe even to talk a little bit about Photoshop on the iPad um, if you guys want to. So, but uh, these are going to kind of be the places that we work. Um, and there are some also some awesome other applications for creating patterns and finding text and things like that, like Capture, which, you know, we may dive into. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to focus on Fix, Mix, and Lightroom primarily today. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and get started and we'll just go ahead and open up um, Photoshop Fix and I'll show you what's going on over there. So Photoshop Fix, basically the idea behind Fix and Mix and even Express um, is that they take parts of the uh, main application of Photoshop and then kind of distill them into pretty easy to use uh, touch interface based applications. So we're going to start with Fix and I'll show you what I mean. Cool. So let's go ahead and open Fix here. So what Photoshop Fix allows us to do is to um, fix pictures and things like that. We'll go through a few different examples here and show you some things they can do. I'll start with um, one of the examples that Adobe offers you in app. So you have this too if you want to try it. And then we will um, take a look at editing one. Then we'll go back to um, another, another um, built-in one. And then I'll show you one other thing that I've used Fix for that's kind of interesting. So we'll start with this uh, creative retouching here. So I'm just gonna wanna walk us through a tutorial maybe. If this is the first time you launched it, you'll see that. But um, if you look along the bottom here, we have a bunch of different options here. Crop, adjust, liquefy, healing, smooth, light, color, paint, defocus, and vignette. Um, you'll find across a number of different applications, you're gonna see similar types of things really. They can all kind of crop. They can all kind of adjust color and things like that, but um, there are certain things that different that these different kind of micro programs excel at. Uh, and this one, fix. We're going to talk about how to fix stuff, so it makes sense, right? All right, we're going to go ahead and zoom in here, and then I'm looking at this guy. What I want to do, so I'll zoom in, and I want to kind of get rid of the seaplane adventures icon here, because maybe. This person said we could use this photo, but they want to take their logo off of this. So let's go ahead and do that. So pretty easy to do. So we're going to go ahead and grab the healing tool here. Healing's down here at the bottom. And then you'll get this sub menu that pops up. You'll know that you're in a sub menu and fix because everything kind of darkens and you get um, on the left on the left hand side over here, these uh, brush controls. So two buttons here, three buttons actually. First when you have a size, when you rest your finger on it and you slide up and down, it will increase or decrease the size of the brush. Like a lot of like a lot of um, Photoshop based applications, brushes can do a whole lot here. So we're using a brush to kind of determine the size of the cursor that we're playing with here when we start to edit. So and then the hardness, if you take a look at it as I kind of scale in and scale out, that's how hard the outside edge is here. And I'm gonna want a relatively soft edge, so I'm gonna go about 50. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint over this Seaplane Adventures logo. Kind of like that. Then when I let go, see it's almost gone, so I may have to take a couple different passes at it. And you'll see pretty easily we've removed this content here. Nothing that I have to do, no extra kind of steps to take. Really, I just kind of have to adjust as I go, and I'm just repainting over and over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and back up here on the top right hand side. You'll see a little back arrow to go backwards. So I'll just step back and show you what we did. So one more time, I'm gonna resize my brush here. It's a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna paint this out. You kind of see me drawing right there. And it did a pretty good job here. Now, if I zoom in a little bit, I'll see that I missed a little speck there. Not a big deal. Just paint again. 
And then there's my finished thing. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one too. So I'm just gonna paint this through. We'll see how it goes. You can see I'm pretty roughly running my thing across it. And again, if it doesn't look perfect, you can always sweep back over it. And really what it's doing is it's sampling the area around it. So fix in this particular application is gonna work really well when you have a lot of the same pattern for it to kind of work with here. So let's see if we can find another space where this main, let's see here. So if I wanted to come over here, whoops. So actually this is something kind of good to point out. If you make a mistake like this and you accidentally kind of take out this area right here, one cool thing about fix is that you have this little uh, underneath hardness, you have this little brush icon here. This will show you all of your strokes. So you can see everywhere where you edited this image. If you wanted to bring any part of it back, like I want to bring back this part here that I messed up, I'm going to go ahead and go under restore, which looks like an eraser. And then I can simply paint back the area that I accidentally ran over there. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to really quickly use the clone stamp tool here. This um, will allow you to create details that are in one spot in another place. So that's really good for things like kind of water and things like that. But the clone stamp tool is interesting. So what the clone stamp tool will do, you'll see it's kind of painting out and giving us some water here. The way that it works is that we select a center sample point. So let me go ahead and undo that so I can show you one more time, so I can explain it. Now I kind of showed you what it did. Um, so with the clone stamp tool, we have to pick where, let's see if we can get it to move here. Back, 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 cool. All right, so tap on clone stamp. And then let's see if we can move that circle there. Cool. And then I select where it's going to go, and then you can kind of paint the water back in. It's literally just cloning the exact same space from here and over here. But you can see I can pretty effectively get rid of that dock, and it looks pretty good. So clone stamping and then healing and all the type of stuff can be found here. Um, it just depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it. Clone stamping, in my opinion, works really great when there's kind of repetitive patterns like water ripples and things like that. I think that healing works pretty well when you have broad surfaces that you want to kind of manipulate and edit. So like the side of this plane or a face are really, really good options for the healing brush tool. And you can also fix red eye. Um, it's a single button press to kind of fix that. But I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And we'll commit that change and I'll hit the back arrow on the top left hand side to get back to our main menu here. And then we'll see that all of our kind of creations show up at the front over here. So one other thing that's pretty cool about Fix is um, the Liquify tool. So if I open up this photo here and I go to Liquify, basically what Liquify will do is that it can automatically detect faces. So if you have a picture of a face I'm using Adobe's AI system, Adobe Sensei, it will look at your picture and determine if there are faces in it and attach these nodes to them. So you'll select any one of them to adjust the facial feature. So we're just gonna walk through this together. So if I tap on the forehead here, so now I'll see that I have some options here. I have, um, I'm under the forehead section and then I can move the slider up to modify her forehead. So if I slide it up, you'll see that forehead gets bigger or slide it down to kind of make it smaller there. You can see that like if I exaggerate it, it looks kind of thing, but if I just barely adjust it, it's a pretty seamless looking thing. Then we can adjust the width of that as well. It's just tap and slide really. And then we can adjust kind of the distortion of her face as well. So if we wanted to make that appear smaller, I kind of liked it kind of where it was. So I'm going to put that back and I'll pick a different point in the face. And really kind of the interesting thing here is kind of the, just how much you can, fair, how much variation you can have. So you can see we can kind of increase the size of her eyes to kind of beyond human levels. We want them a little bit bigger. We could do that. We could adjust the distance between the eyes. The algorithms that they put into this are kind of crazy. And while you can kind of get wild with it, the amount of like slight adjustments 
that you can make are pretty wild. So if we wanted to say, we just tap and then if we wanted to change her nose, for example, we could adjust the width of that nose and the height of it pretty seamlessly and pretty quickly. And there's a lot of, um, and like when it kind of boils down to it, there's a lot of kind of cultural significance behind this, I think. Like just how much can, how like what's real and like what, how can photos be manipulated and things like that. And um, and there's some ethical questions too about like, should these, should these types of things where, should, should these like images that we see, should there be some sort, some measure of um, disclaimer or something like that saying that these things change and it's just kind of, and while like this is a very useful tool, like I think it kind of brings to light like what's possible and is a great kind of conversation piece here. So interesting stuff and um, super, super powerful um, and absolutely worth knowing a bit more about. And then if we wanted to adjust like her lower lip, you can see that we can give her a bigger lower lip and her bigger upper lip or a smaller one. Like I said, just kind of, and if we, we can even see, we can kind of adjust it so that she's cracking a smile if we want or making more of a frown here. So just kind of the levels that are available here just with the liquify tool are kind of nuts. Um, so sorry, I didn't mean to like <laughs> bring like a question of why we do what we do and what questions you should ask. Um, but I think it's absolutely worth kind of investigating and pointing out. Um, so last thing I want to show you here inside of fix, and it's the same in a lot of applications. So I've made a lot of changes to this. If you want to see the original on the top left hand side, if you tap on this and hold on it, that's where we were and that's where we are. So you can see I kind of exaggerated things, but this was just a few sliders on one section of this. We went from this, which I like a whole lot to this, which I really don't like too much. Um, so, but just want to kind of show you that we have those abilities here. Now, other kind of more fun things we can, although I'd argue this is kind of fun. Um, we'll back up a little bit actually. Other things that we can kind of do here is we have just the standard warp and a warp will allow you to take a section and then kind of stretch it out, stuff like that. So if we wanted to make our hair kind of like wisp out this way, we could do that. There's a swell option here, which allows to kind of pinch and pull your face and then twirls kind of fun. This allows you to kind of rotate this guy in and out. So you have a lot of different options inside of there. And again, I tend to like the original one better than what I did here, but just to show you that this stuff is possible. And that's not on just on a face. The liquify features for changing like facial features are available on the face, are available when faces are detected though. So, cool. Um, some more practical applications here. So I went to one of Adobe's conferences a while ago now, um, but I found this Dream Bigger thing that I wanted to use for something else. Um, and I liked it a lot, but I don't like, while well, these people talking in the bottom are fine, let's say I wanted to get rid of them. The, um, the healing, Options are really great for that. So just spot heal, make the brush bigger. You can just kind of pretty quickly paint these guys out. And because these colors are uniform, it looks like they were never there. If I wanted to kind of tackle this seam that showed up right there, and I really don't necessarily need to, I'll probably make my brush kind of just big enough to kind of go over it. I'll just kind of run it along the center here. And by the way, like when you're Drawing, you're gonna use one finger to kind of draw and then two fingers to, to pan around. It's pretty common in a lot of these applications. Hopefully it's helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions in the chat. I'm here for you guys. Um, so let me go ahead and zoom out here and then show you the original. So there's the original, there's that gone. And you'll see I kind of got rid of that seam in the center. I think it looks pretty good. Cool. And then um, other things that we may want to do here, because it's kind of cattywampus. Let's see if we can rotate this a little bit. So let's get a crop. And then we can rotate with this little slider right here. Just a little bit. Oh. I'm kind of switching between my stylus and my finger just because I feel like for these kind of like rotating and sliding things. I like my finger more than I like my Apple Pencil here. Um, then I'll hit okay, cool. And then 
there's that one kind of all done so and the cool thing is that if we go into take a look at this guy because we didn't flatten the image we can always kind of see you can always kind of jump back to the original which is pretty cool uh, so now back one more time uh, last thing I'd like to do here so I had an instance where I wanted to share something I think this was something off of handshake like a student position that we had a while ago um, and I wanted to make it um, anonymous because I a student um, asked one of my students I worked with to share the screen with me so I can kind of do that up here is their kind of little um, up here is their avatar for when they log in to this thing I but I did this kind of like blurring effect to remove that so this is a quick way to do that I'm gonna go ahead and show you so it goes under defocus and then uh, to defocus something all we have to do is set the brushes and things like that just like before Let's see if I can restore it there we go so there's the original one it was just their uh, initials there so not too big of a deal but we want to remove kind of the identifying components for them so what we'll do is under the defocus tool we'll go to defocus here select the size select the hardness we'll go ahead and give this kind of a medium opacity here then we're just going to brush over if we do that right we can do multiple passes to make it more and more blurry so if you need to blur out people's information or wanted a really really quick way to do that on your phone like let's say that kind of couch going through here and this this red bar here we wanted to get rid of you would just kind of do the same thing just kind of run it over a couple times cool and then it's blurred out so that we can still kind of share the content here without it um, having any identifying information if we wanted to get rid of the time same thing just run over a couple times Maybe that said Verizon, that's an identifying feature or the website or something like that. So you kind of blur out the parts that we don't want people to see. And then hit OK. And then when we're ready to share it out, the share button's on the top right hand side. We can send to the camera roll, which is going to be like your phone's um, picture roll. You also send to Photoshop or save for Lightroom or um, any measure of any manner of things. You want to share straight to Instagram, you can tap on it. It will open up your Instagram app and you can share it out. So pretty powerful stuff. Cool. Let me know if you have any questions. We're gonna go ahead and quickly move on to another application. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Highly recommend trying out Photoshop Fix. Awesome addition for your phone. All right, so Photoshop Mix is next. We launch Mix here. What Mix really allows us to do is it allows us to take two pictures and kind of combine them on top of each other using not only um, some basic blending modes, but also some but also compositing, so you can kind of cut things out from other, cut images out from other images and place them here. So I made a few of these already. Um, I think that this one's probably my favorite, so we'll get back to that, but we'll go ahead and make a new one now. Let's go ahead and hit the plus button here, and then we're gonna pick some images. So I have a number of things here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, um, lady eating an ice cream cone and I'm gonna go ahead and pick a different image here then I will grab this kind of staircase looking thing and I will just kind of scale that up from the corners you can pinch and pull as well cool so then I'll place these and we'll see that we have some new options at the bottom the first uh, so we have adjust looks looks is kind of cool there's kind of one button presses for effects. Pretty nice. So if you're going for some kind of wild, like I kind of like the, if you want to kind of see what different intensities look like for this, this is already a pretty intense image. But let's say that I liked that kind of, I think I like this one. So I'll just hit that. And then there's also a smart um, option here, which will allow you to select and highlight different specific areas. So if I really wanted that light to pop, for example, you can see that light pink along these top light sections. You see it kind of gets a little bit brighter. Whoops, I think Siri was trying to listen to me. Cool, so we can do that as well. 
And you'll see if I kind of go with a bigger brush stroke, just those areas become really, really vibrant. I kind of like that actually. Cool. So as you're working, I think you'll find that like playing with some of these things and just experimenting can take you a long way to kind of getting some stuff. Now we have some pretty drastic differences between the kind of light sources in the image and the ones that aren't. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark to do OK, and then I'm going to go to Blend. So if I go to Blend here, I'll see a bunch of different blending modes. Now, they're kind of split into kind of two different uh, areas. These first two are the darkened sections, which are probably going to work well for this, uh, which will work well if this was the background image, but if I kind of pull those through, you'll see you get kind of this fun looking um, idea here. Maybe not the best for this, but if I go to Lighten, because I lightened up those areas, you see that these kind of look like little rays around her, and then I can kind of, then that gives me an idea to maybe select this top one, and then, and then once I hit OK here, top one, then maybe scale it up just a little bit. You focus that around her, I can rotate this out and kind of get this thing. Where I'm kind of framing her face inside of this little guy right here. And then the other thing I can do with that blend section is that once I have a blending mode set up, actually that one's kind of cool too. I just find I have a good time with this stuff. <laughs> um, so once I, ooh, just color, ooh, that one's fun. So and then I can adjust the opacity here so they can be either full on or just kind of like the idea of that. So like that right there looks kind of cool. So, and it just took a couple different images, a few uh, editing and manipulations and then hitting okay to kind of commit that. So we got this kind of wild looking, um, wild looking space here that we can go through and kind of play with some more stuff with. Now, let me go ahead and show you a few other ones that I made before. This one I kind of made on the fly made a few more previously that I think I like a little bit more. But, oh, by the way, because Photoshop is pretty new to iPad, it says, hey, if you want to retouch or composite or do layers, you should try Photoshop. And if you have an iPad, highly recommend you check it out, especially if you um, have a account through the university. It's a part of the Adobe Creative Cloud plan. Highly recommend you take advantage of it. I'm going to go ahead and hit dismiss for now. Then I'll show you this other one that I made that I really like. And then, like I said, we'll move into Lightroom next. So from here, we're going to go ahead and just take a look at kind of how these were constructed. If you tap on a layer twice, you'll hide it. So this is a gummy bear surfing. Uh, this is a gummy bear on a surfboard made of gummy bears. Kind of cool. <laughs> um, and then the layer on top of this is some paper lanterns in Little Tokyo in Los Angeles. So um, what we did here was kind of the same thing. Um, we went, we chose a blending mode. And by the way, like if I tap on blend, it brings that up. But if you tap on the icons as well, you get the sub menu that pops up. And from here, you can do a lot of different things. So we can change the blending mode kind of on the fly. So if I wanted luminosity or color. So basically, um, these different blending modes are different relationships between the pixels and every um, Whenever you switch the blending modes to darken, we'll show you the darkest pixels between all of these. Multiply um, is a variation of that. Um, and then lighten, we'll show you the lightest pixels. And then screen, again, it's kind of a variation of that that's going to emphasize the whiter parts. Overlay is going to make these look like they're sitting on top of each other, and there's some transparency to them. Difference is going to look at the difference between pixels and give you the and give you different values. Then luminosity is going to look at the um, at the intensity of white in between the two and then kind of give you a colored variation of that. And color, we'll look at the dominant colors in the different spaces. I think for this, I still like multiply. So I'm gonna go with that. Then I can tap right here to lower the opacity as well. And then the other thing that I can do here is I can cut parts out. So down here it says like Kagura, maybe I don't want that. We're gonna try it out. So if I tap on this top one here, and then I go to cut out, 
I have a bunch of different options here. I'm just gonna go with basic. That will allow me to kind of brush out the areas I don't want. So if I don't want this kind of marquee here, but everything else is fine. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go back because I think I did the opposite of what I wanted to do, which happens sometimes. So go ahead and get cut out. Then I'll grab everything but that. There are lots of different ways to do it. There's a smart tool here that's gonna kind of help us auto select as I'm just gonna run our finger across, which will probably be faster for this application. But it grabs that Kagura, right? So I should be able to go through and then grab basic and then go to eraser here and then remove this Kagura sign like so. And then go back to brush, kind of brush in this stuff. So typically like what we're doing, we're getting into compositing now. And basically when you composite, a combination of different tools is what you're going to want to use typically to kind of get things removed the way that you want them. So um, we switch between smart and then basic and then there's all sorts of other tools as well. But now you'll see that that Kagura is gone and we still have all these paper lanterns and I think it looks pretty good. Cool. So now, um, well, like I, just like every other application, we're ready to share. We'll hit the share button, tap on camera roll, all that stuff to kind of uh, continue editing. And if we wanted to push this directly to Photoshop, you can open in Photoshop and then it will appear in Photoshop and you're able to keep moving. So hopefully that was a good look at Photoshop Mix. Highly recommend that you check it out. Awesome mobile, mobile application. So now moving on, uh, we have a full version of Lightroom available to us. So with the new, with Lightroom, um, they call it Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, but it's also known as Lightroom CC. Uh, so uh, with Lightroom, there are kind of two variations. There's Lightroom Classic, which is the desktop exclusive um, application. And there's uh, Lightroom CC, which is the one that we're using here. Um, and what that gives you is that it gives you full access to Adobe Lightroom um, across all your different devices. So Lightroom is a not only a photo editor, but it's also a it's also a photo organization tool. So you can keep your entire library in Lightroom and then share between all your different devices so that you can edit wherever you're at. And as you add photos, they'll be available on all devices, which is pretty nice. Um, so if carrying your photos with you everywhere and being able to edit them in, in the same environment across multiple devices is what you're looking for, it can be a really, really great tool to help you do that. So let's go ahead and we'll jump in and take a look at some things in Lightroom. So to bring in new content into Lightroom, we will go to the Libraries tab. So the Libraries tab is this first one right here. It looks like a little couple books. Then we'll hit the plus button here. Then we can create a new album to house all of our stuff. So albums are a way you can organize. You don't have to organize this way, but it is built into there. So we can just call this um, YouTube demo. That way I know to remove it later. Cool. So I can tap on YouTube demo here and then I need to add some photos. So I can either take a picture right now, just using the camera here, which gives us some pretty powerful tools for taking photos, but I'm going to go ahead and import instead. So I can pull from all my photos from my camera roll or from my files. So I'm going to go ahead and go to camera roll and then we'll see all the different pictures that I have on here. So what we'll do is we'll pick a few. So I'm gonna pick this guy, this guy, and this cheesecake, and this guy right here. And let's grab this pineapple for fun. Then we're gonna hit add. Then I'll add those photos to my library. And then from here, I can go ahead and start editing. So I'll just tap on the one that I wanna edit. And then we can kind of start working through editing these photos. So I think we're on the info tab right now. So if we go to the top um, option on the right hand side, we will see um, this auto button here. So if you just want to do a really quick edit, you can tap on auto. It'll basically go through and adjust colors for us. And then we can go through and kind of see what it did. 
if you rest your finger on the image, you'll be able to see where how it started and then how it ended up. So you'll see right here when I rest my finger, um, things are a little bit duller. So what it did was that it increased the shadows and then lowered the highlights so that I get more detail out of the sand that's there, which is pretty nice. Um, so I can go through and kind of adjust some exposure elements myself. So I can adjust the brightness here with, with the exposure. I can adjust contrast. I kind of like what it did before, so I can step backward. Just by hitting the back button up here. Cool. And then I can go in and adjust color. So let me go ahead and pick a different image here. I'll go ahead and grab this guy. Cool. So if I hit auto here, it's going to increase the brightness right here. So um, what I'll do under effects is I want to try and bring some clarity here because I think it's a little bit fuzzy. We'll see how this goes. I haven't tried this image before, but you'll see that when I increase the clarity, it brings up the sharpness a little bit and this looks like a little bit sharper of an image. I can go through and I can do some cleanup um, on this image if I wanted to. Uh, I do have some healing tools. So I have this, so I have a spot healing brush here as well. So I can go through, but the spot healing brush works a little bit differently. I have to define the area that I want to heal. So, and I can have multiple sections here. So you can see that this gets a little bit more um, powerful than it was before. I can kind of adjust these to kind of get exactly what I'm looking for here. And typically you're gonna to wanna to take multiple passes from multiple locations. to kind of get the effect you're going for here. So to get rid of that kind of like little bit of a issue with the bridal that they were having before, I just used that clone stamp tool. And then again, the first one, and I like this little white tuft here, but if we want to get rid of this white tuft, I'll show you how to do it. I'll tap, to kind of set the area, then Lightroom is going to look around and try and help me fix it. But if I don't like its fix, this uh, smaller loop on the left hand side is the one, I, the one that I can move to manipulate that bigger loop. So you see when I move that around, it will kind of choose where it came from. I kind of like where it was, so I'll put that back. Cool. And then you can see that we can have kind of multiple heal, healing sections kind of all in the same place. And then I rest my finger on it. So it looked like before. So we have some of the, we have some like spots in her coat and things like that. If I let go, we'll see that we kind of fix those spots. And um, she looks like a little bit better. Uh, looks like she doesn't have as much, looks like she hasn't been, um, like either her, uh, her skin has been brushed out a little bit uh, with this one and it's a little bit brighter. So you have kind of those options that you can kind of play with. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and we'll go back Oh, by the way, hit done when you're done with this process to commit the change, and it's there for you, however you want to share it. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and take a look at um, a few other things that we have here. Let me go ahead and grab this album here. So uh, there's a lot that can be done to um, adjust all sorts of different images here. I think I've already done some adjustments to this, so I'll go ahead and reset all of my adjustments here. Cool. So um, if you want to get a little bit more um, artistic with your images, there's lots of different ways you can do that. And we'll start with um, light. So we can adjust exposure uh, and we talked about that before, but there's also this curves option here. So what curves will allow us to do is that they will allow us to not only adjust by moving, um, by moving across a line like this. We can set multiple points just by setting them so we can kind of control the brightness and contrast of different areas just by exposing those. So we can kind of pinch and pull to kind of really, we can add lots of different points. It's kind of what we're going for. And then I'm kind of, I'm being pretty dramatic with these shifts and changes, but it's typically a salt and pepper proposition here. So the bottom down here, the bottom part of this curve are the darkest parts of the image right? 
So you see that I can kind of pull the darks into the negative and then I get this kind of like wild looking effect to them. So as I slide from left to right though, I'm, I'm basically increasing the amount of absolute black in the image here. So as I slide this little slider, I'm making this darker and darker and darker. And the reason why it stops right here is because of the point right above it. Let me go ahead and back up a little bit. Let's get back to that simple curve. Cool. So you see that if I slide this across, it seems we'll get darker and darker. Maybe that's what you want, but you'll see that it will stop before the next point here. So we can't go any further than that next point. So if we're just using it with two points here, which probably we'll stick with, I'll drag this guy a little bit, kind of darken that, and then I can pull back on the opposite side to increase the white as well. So that's kind of how curves work. And then if, and as I move towards the center, I'm making those lighter areas more gray. If I start from the top, if I grab from the bottom up, I'm making all the darker parts more gray. So eventually, if we just kind of bring them together, we get literally a gray image. So that's one piece, right? So, and then I kind of zoomed in there. If you just tap on it, it will kind of get the interface out of the way and let you do the work. Um, now we have, um, we can also, we're adjusting all three colors right now, right? So uh, when you are working with color you uh, on a, on a display here, you have red, green, and blue. So you have those exact same options for the red channels. So if things are looking too red, you can kind of adjust those and you'll see that as I kind of pull this red across, making the sky more red and things like that. So you have a lot of different ways you can kind of move work with curves and there are entire um, courses devoted to the basics of working with curves, but essentially um, they just give you a different degree of control over the um, light in your image. So uh, I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. And then let's go down to effects here. And there are a lot of different effects, texture, clarity, but one of my favorites is split toning. So split toning will allow you to select a different color for the highlights and a different color for the shadows. So if we click and drag to move this, I can make my highlights one color, and my shadows another color. So I get this kind of cool like two color effect here, which is pretty fun and um, super easy to work with. So we've got that guy right there. And then we'll take a look at one more thing and then we'll call this a workshop. Well, thanks guys for hanging out. I appreciate it. So last but not least, let's go ahead and take a look at a building. Let me bring one in. Let me find a photo that I like that has a building in it. Or structure rather. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I think I've already done some. Go ahead and reset this guy. Cool. So we're going to talk about geometry real quick. So when I took this picture, I was a little bit off angle, and you already saw that I kind of fixed it already, but I'll show you a few different examples of how to do this. We can use the geometry tool to basically define what straight lines are, and then our entire image will shift to match those lines. So if I go to geometry here, I have these little handles, and then I can create some handles here. So the idea behind these handles is I'm going to show or tell Lightroom what vertical is supposed to be, and then it will adjust those accordingly to make this to orient these in the right direction. You can do vertical and horizontal. This is great for if you needed to quick snap a quick picture and maybe you didn't have time to kind of get through the entire image or, or like you didn't have time to take the picture like in a straight on way, you were crossing a street or something like that, you, you really liked an image. Uh, so let me go ahead and tap on the, it takes us two points here. So I already messed those up. So let me go ahead and undo that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tell it that this is straight. So grab one point, grab another point drop them like this and you can follow the line here. You don't have to go all the way down, but you just want to make sure that you sell it, that that's vertical here. So then I'll do the same thing to another point on the opposite side. And I can zoom in a little bit. And then you'll see that that straightens out this guy right here. And then if I, come here. <laughs> you'll see that really what it's doing is it's adjusting your perspective here. So 
if I do this to show that it's kind of straight too, that's the straight line. You'll see it kind of flattens it out so that now this is completely um, horizontally and vertically exactly where I want it to be and a little bit more representative of what I actually saw. If I rest my finger here to kind of show you the original, you'll see the things are kind of slanted a little bit. And then if I let go, it straightens it out. And this is a bit more indicative of what things actually look like. One last example of that. And you can play with it to kind of get some different effects too. Uh, let's go ahead and take um, this right here. Cool. So let's say that I wanted to make this um, advertisement on the left hand side appear more straight than it is. So we'll do the same thing. We'll grab the geometry tool, grab that. And then we will define what straight is supposed to be for this. So if I want this building to be completely straight, I'll grab this side. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Kind of following the line there. And then you'll see it kind of vaulted a little bit to get that straight. But this is a more straight, whoop. Let's go back up. And this is a more straight version of that um, sign right there. And then if I rest my finger, this is where we were, which I like quite a bit, but if we just needed this thing completely straight, it's either that somebody was like, yeah, take a picture of that thing kind of um, straight straight on. That's a bit more straight. And then you can zoom in a little bit and then just kind of grab this section right here to show what you're working with. Cool. All right, sweet. So when you're done with this, you may want to share this out. Uh, so you can take entire albums and share them out. Um, so you can select any album that you've created, hit these ellipses, and then you can share. And then you have to enable sharing when you want to share it. They're set to private by default. But then you basically have a link that anybody can go through and check out your photos. So I can copy this link here. I tap on it, then it goes to lightroom.adobe.com and you don't, and the other person doesn't have to be, oh, you have to sign in to view this album. <laughs> All right, let's pick a different one. Mm -hmm. There we go. Cool. So let me show you one I've already shared here. Cool. So this is our album from Adobe Max. And here are all of our different images and all the things that we took with all of our edits on them available for anybody to view. And then in your settings for your shared albums, you can say anybody can view or they need an invite to see it. You can choose who members are that can see it. You can set the link settings so you can allow people to download them if you want to. So if you're sharing this with a team or something like that, that could be a great way to kind of get that in their hands. And um, you can allow comments and even show metadata and metadata um, will show to see any metadata that you have. All you have to do is tap on an image here. Then this eye down here, if the image has metadata on it, will show you when the picture was taken, what the camera was and what the settings were. So that if you liked how a picture looked, you could replicate it. Pretty easy. Um, so that was a pretty quick look at editing um, and manipulating different things on mobile applications. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for hanging out and um, we'll see you in another stream. Take care and bear down.